Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. Now, in a tweet that I put online a couple of weeks back, I think it was like two weeks ago or something, uh, there were a couple of you which were, it was a photograph of the fuse board here where I'm working, and I just, I didn't think anything of it, I just put the tweet up, put it online, and that was the end of that. And anyway, it was showing quite a lot of interest, and a lot of you were asking how, you know, what, can you explain a bit more about what you've done there? Uh, so, I'll, I'll show you. So for any of you who've been watching the channel for any period of time, you'll know this was the larger job, which I was, this is the sort of big job that I was working on. Uh, and this is the intake here. So it's, we've cleaned it up a lot since, uh, since the very beginning uh, when we were here, because uh, there was, I mean, there was so much old stuff here, but we've ripped it all out and we've got this 18 mil ply, which we've put on now. We've got to do the same on this side. Uh, but this is the fuse board here, which is powering this flat. So this is just a 20, I think it's a 20 way board here. 20, yes, 20 way board. Uh, as it happens, we've actually filled it up. So what we're going to do is I've got another fuse board. In fact, I've got that fuse board there. It's another 20 way uh, contact and board to go somewhere down there. So there's going to be another piece of four inch trunking like that going there somewhere. And then the next contact and board will go underneath. I mean, what we're going to have to do is those tails are going to have to come out. They're going to have to go up to a like 100 amp isolator or something then into a set of Henley blocks, and then one set of tails will go to this board, and another set will go down to this board here, because we've got to have one isolator which can isolate all the power in the building. So uh, it's a little bit annoying about to go, because it's actually quite neat the way we've done it, but needs must. Um, now we've opted for a dual, uh, not a dual RCD, I fit them so often I get used to saying it. We've ended up opting for an RCBO board here. So these are, I think we've got a cooker. We're starting with the heaviest loads on the right, and then working our way to the lighting on the left. So we've got cooker, shower, and then the aircon units, and a couple of ring circuits there. Uh, there is an argument over, there's quite a few of you saying why are we bothering to fit ring circuits and stuff. Personally, I actually, I despise ring circuits. I think they're just, they're, they're just a, a, a no, they're a non-starter in my eyes, but unfortunately it's a necessary evil over here. So, and then we've got, that just then goes down to 16 amp breakers, uh, smoke alarms, lighting, blah, blah, blah. Um, and the only reason we fitted an RCBO board was just for the uh, just for the versatility of it because we were quite a few circuits in this installation. Because as some of you have pointed out in some of my other videos, when you fit a dual RCD board, you don't quite get that level of you don't you don't get the with an RCBO board you've got maximum flexibility. With a dual RCD, you're always going to get some sort of irritating. You know, when the power trips on one RCD, it's always going to take out a bank of you know four or five six MCBs and sometimes that can be bloody irritating and the only reason we've done it here is because we've got the KNX system and we've got quite techy stuff going on here so it, it just made more sense in this particular install just to fit an RCBO setup so um, and yeah and then talking of KNX uh, is this one here a lot of you were asking what was the fuse board below well this is it this is just uh, this is where our KNX system it basically all uh, comes from so we've basically got a 24 volt uh, supply which goes out to the LMS panel in fact I might be able to show you that actually hang on in fact yes i can because we haven't fitted it yet i've got it here uh, right that's his little wireless one so this is like a um this is this is called lms quick so this is like uh this is a wireless unit so if he wants to you know if he's just sitting on the sofa he can just have this on the coffee table and then he can just select what scene he wants or he can have them all on all off etc etc um Pretty straightforward to fit. I mean, it's just battery powered, this one, and then you just link it up to the gateway and stuff here, and off you go. But I'll get to that in a second. Uh, but this one, yeah, this one here is the hardwired one. This is the LMS Quick panel, which is going in the living room. In fact, this is actually the corner of the living room. So it's just a KNX cable, and this will eventually, the bat box will go in there, and it will literally just sit in the corner of the room there. But he's actually, he's not having this particular unit anymore because he's, uh, we've managed to sell him a, a better setup. I can't actually, I can't actually remember what the name of it, ZX41 or something. It's a, a digital touchscreen setup. So this is a more simplified version, but he wants the, the next step up. So we've actually got to run another KNX cable in to make that happen. But connections at the back are literally, you've just got the, uh, the power input and then the Darley positive and negative, and that's it. In fact, these here are the light fittings, which we're fitting all the way through the house. Um, they're so, you can't even touch these. They go on about how energy efficient LEDs are, and you can't, this is so hot. I can barely touch them. And these are the drivers here which are powering all the light fittings. So each light fitting has its own individual Darley driver like this. Um, and they're pretty straightforward. This, you've got a permanent live feed coming in, so this isn't switched. This uh, one mil cable here is permanently live. And it's the, it's the module here which actually controls when the light comes on and off. 
And then you've got the KNX cable, which is wired all the way back to the panel over there. And then obviously the light switch and stuff, that's all KNX again. But we're using, um, you can use traditional uh, KNX switches, you can use those, or you can use normal switches. And then you just have, uh, you have a, uh, uh, a little interface. In fact, here's a good example of one. So you just have a TA4 interface like this here, which connects to your KNX cables coming in. Uh, and then you just wire it straight to your retractive switches. Um, so they're not actually like traditional on and off switches, they're just... No, in fact, I've just turned the lights off. But you get the gist, they're not normal on and off switches, they're retractive ones, so they're just pushed to make switches. So you just literally push to turn it on, push to turn it off, and then if you wanted to dim it, you just press and hold. So, uh, and then we just got the... We left the covers off for a minute because they're still painting and stuff, so... And these are the recessed lights that are throughout the rest of the property here. This is just one room to give you an example, but uh, these are the recessed lights that are now in. Uh, and they are really, they're lo the actual finish on them, I don't know how well the camera picks it up, but the finish on them is absolutely stunning. But this is basically all they are. You've just got this, this tray here, which goes, that goes up into the ceiling. And then this is the, the actual, this is the light fitting itself. So you just have the plug on the end, which plugs in, uh, and it's just got magnets on the back of it. And that then just sticks straight into this tray, in fact, just like that. So, and that's all there is to it. So they're quite easy to replace. You know, in a few years' time, when they, you know, five years' time or whenever they need to start being replaced, they are, it's a doddle to replace them, actually. I had visions of it being a proper nightmare trying to replace them. But actually, they have thought about it, and it's a very clever way they've done it, because it makes, you know, the replacements, doing spare parts, maintenance, and that sort of stuff, is really simple. And that's the diffuser. That will go, just go up there like that. But, yeah, for the time being, we're leaving it off, because the painter's got to do his thing in here and stuff. So... There's no point us going around putting them all on yet because they're just going to get wrecked otherwise. So, so yeah, just a little video just to show you what we've been up to here. Um, it's a bit difficult to show you what's going on here now because it's just painters decorate. There's so much stuff going on here. Uh, and the security guys are here doing their stuff as well. So I can't really show you the rest of it. But uh, yeah, this is it. Just a little midweek video to let you know where we are, what we're getting up to. Um, thank you very much for watching. Hit subscribe, hit like, and we will see you on another video. Take care.